everybody happy friday to you hey erica mom bruce i miss anybody uh violet hello hello sheila goodwin hello i hope you're having a great day wherever you are whatever you're doing Hope you're having a great Friday. It's Super Bowl weekend. I was just reading that, uh, what did it say? It was like 1.9 billion chicken wings will be sold this weekend. <laughs> and I'm going to have about 10 of them. So I am participating in the chicken massacre. What did it say? Yeah, it was something like that. Anyway, I hope everybody's having a good weekend. <laughs> everybody's having a good weekend. Uh, we're going to get going. I had a great meeting this morning. Met some really nice gentlemen as we're hopping on. Uh, uh, <laughs> had a um, good meeting this morning with some gentlemen that I met, uh, executive pastor and an elder at a, another church. And uh, they just giving me some counsel on some things that uh, we are working on DMI in reference to um, new facilities and what we need to watch out for, pitfalls and things like that. So it was a great meeting. Uh, the Lord is connecting us with people that have uh, more experience, more knowledge, then uh, yes, my, yes, mom, go Bengals. More experience and more knowledge, and um, we are going to be very strategic and wise in uh, in how we go forth with our new facility. Uh, again, I don't have any time frame on that, no time frame, but don't even worry about that. We just want to lay the groundwork right now and take it take it one step at a time. So I just I, I want to keep y'all updated. You know the Facebook. Facebook family, we all family, regardless of where you live, keep you updated on what's going on uh, here in Dayton, Ohio. Okay, let me turn this music down. Let's get going. Uh, we are talking about spiritual maturity uh, tonight, uh, tonight, today. I just want to talk with you real quick, uh, just picking up again on verse 13 that we were on. I'm going to read the verse real quick. I'm not going to elaborate on it because I have another verse I want to share with you. Uh, it says, uh, Romans 6, 13, do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead, give yourselves completely to God for you were dead, but now you have new life. So use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. All right. Use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. Um, so I'm, I'm, I, I do this. uh I do a small group, all right, a small group, and we are like on chapter 20 out of like 26 chapters, a small group with a group of ladies and gentlemen now that uh, that are actually in the Georgia area. We meet every, uh, I don't know if you, if, well, some of you know her, Prophetess uh, Ginger Taylor, her ministry team, her brother hops on. So we do this small group and we've been doing it. We started in January of last year. We're going through this book. It's called Spiritual Strategies, a Manual of Spiritual Warfare. We're going through this book and it's a really, really good manual. But anyway, I picked up something last night that goes right along with what we're talking about. Um, goes right along with what we're talking about in reference to spiritual maturity 
and not letting any part of our body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. So uh, what we what we talked about last night was spiritual uh, spirit transference, spirit transference. Now, when I say spirit transference, I'm not talking about an actual demonic spirit. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the transference of spirit in reference to um, uh, what's the what, how, how do I term this in reference to some in character um, in reference to uh, attitude. That may be a great word to use in reference to attitudes. Have you ever been a, been in an environment where you picked up on and here's how we say it. Uh, you picked up on the spirit of that environment. But really what it was, it was it was it, it was a spirit. It was a spiritual situation, but it was the attitudes and the motives of people. Many times this happens at work. That's why that's why sometimes when we, you know, for those of you who still go into work, going into work can be very challenging because you're you're going in there. Hey, you know, you 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 you're endeavoring to live for the Lord, but then you're going into work. And there are a lot of people that are around you that are not about the same thing that you're about. And so. Uh, it's it can what can happen is is that we can begin to pick up what's going on uh, in that environment and then begin to act and behave like them. Okay, so that's what we were talking about last night. What does that have to do with today? Well, we got to the point where it talked. Uh, it went into Proverbs chapter fifteen, verse four. It said Proverbs fifteen four says this: a wholesome tongue is a tree of life. So obviously we're going to talk about our words today, our tongue, the words. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. Perverseness um, coming out of our mouth. In other words, perverseness is anything that's contrary to how God wants us to talk. Now that can, that, 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 there, there are extremes. That can go everything from cussing, you know, swearing, cussing, all the way to speaking words of doubt, speaking um, uh, uh, badly about other people. Uh, it may have to, you, it could be, um, uh, what is that called? Um, uh, 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 gossiping, uh, you know, anything, anything that's contrary to what we should be using our words for. God gave us Two eyes, two ears, one nose with two nostrils, and one mouth, one mouth, all right? And what, what should come out of that mouth should be blessings, whether it's about yourself or whether it is about other people. You know, again, we were talking about this, I think, last week or a couple of weeks ago. You know, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Uh, but what we want to do is utilize our words, utilize our mouths, our words, in order to be a blessing and not something that hurts us. So what, again, what does this have to do with it? Well, the second part of uh, Proverbs 15 verse four says this, perverseness within our mouths is a breach in the spirit. What is a breach? A breach is like a gap. In other words, when we don't utilize our mouths, our words, I'm gonna use our words now, you know, we're talking about the part of the body, but our words, when we don't utilize our words correctly, here's what happens. We cause a breach in the spirit. There's a gap. There is a, a hole, so to say. And what, do, what does that do? Well, what it does is it gives access. It gives access in the spirit for the enemy in order to, um, to come against our spirits. Now, ho hopefully you're following me. Hopefully you're following me. In other words, when we talk about uh, how this will never happen, although you really want it to happen, what have you done? What have we done? We have caused a breach in the spirit. In other words, we have stopped. We have stopped the flow of what God is desiring to do in our lives and what we desire him to do in our lives. But something happened where we began to think a certain way or we heard some, some bad news and then we start, we immediately get on the phone or we immediately start talking to somebody one-on-one -on -one and start talking about what's wrong. This is what's, and this is what happened and this is, and, and now it's not going to happen. 
and that it, that it, that brings about a breach in the spirit. It's literally, it literally allows the enemy to have access to what you've been praying about and what you've been desiring. I want you to pay attention. Now we talked, you know what? What last month we we said pay attention to what you're thinking. Think about what you're thinking about. Here's what I want to throw at you today. You know where I'm going. Think about what's coming out of your mouth. Now we think about what we've been thinking about, but think about, listen to what you're talking about. If you've been praying for your, your children, grandchildren, husband, wife, if you've been praying for uh, provision, if you've been praying for healing, if you've been praying for deliverance, whatever you've been praying for, if you begin to, if you allow what, whatever news you heard or whatever you saw on social media or whatever somebody shared with you or whatever rationalization that comes in our mind, here is what happens. If you allow that to settle in, it's going to come out of your mouth and you are literally hindering a breach. You're hindering what you've been praying for. This is how the enemy can use that, that one part of your body, the book of James talks about the tongue. This is how the enemy can deceive us into using our own tongues, our own words, in order to stop what it is we've been praying for that God wants to do in our life, life because he's such a good God and it, is a, and it is according to his will, but we literally stop it by utilizing that part of the body as an evil instrument. Do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Don't allow your tongue, your mouth, your words to be an instrument of evil. Don't doubt. No, 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 no. We're not speaking doubt anymore. We're not speaking fear anymore. Here's what we want to speak. Now here, okay, here's what I just heard. Okay, pastor, I hear you, but, but I, you know, I, I got to keep it real. I got to, I, I tell it like it is. Okay. Well, if you tell it like you see it, then that's what you're going to get and continue to get. Now, now it's okay to be real if you want to be real, but we've got to now determine what is real. Is real what you see or is real what the word of God says? Is real what you what your current situation or is real the prayers that you've been praying? You know, if you want to be real, then keep it real, but make sure you know what real is. Real is what 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 the word of God is. Real is the truth. Okay? In other words, what you look when you look around right now, you look at, at where you are, let's just say where you are in life. Okay, if you say I am perfectly content with where I am. I don't want any more changes. I am I am super happy with where I am right now. Then praise God. Praise God for that. You are where you want to be. That is great. That's great. I, I'm happy for you. If you look around and you say, okay, this is good. Okay, good. But this area, I want to see something different. Uh, this is good, but this area, I want to see something different. B area, C area, then whatever areas you want to see different, you need to begin to speak the word of God over those areas. You know this, but most importantly, don't speak against what you're praying for in those areas. That's, that's the whole nugget for today. No more speaking again. No more, no more getting on the phone and saying this, this is not, and this is not, and this is not. Because you, 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 while you want to share what's not going right, it's not helping you. <laughs> it's not helping you. I know. And then, so, so we say, okay, I want to share it with one person. Okay, then that's fine. You're going to have counsel with one person. All right, that's fine. But. If it goes from one person, then another person, then another person. Now, now you, now you probably just talking about what's wrong. Okay, most of the time that's what we're doing. We're talking about what's wrong. 
All right. If we are if we are legitimately going to people saying, listen, this is where I'm at. I'm I, this. I, I'm telling you where I'm at because I want your counsel. Person two, I'm telling you where I'm at because I want your counsel. Person three, I'm telling you where I'm at, where I'm at because I want your counsel. That's fine. But if, if, if it's coming out of the wrong spirit, if it's not coming out of getting God's wisdom and counsel, it's coming out of doubt, excuse me, coming out of doubt and fear. And it's come, that's what causes the breach in the spirit. That is what is stopping us. We're talking too much in the wrong way. So now, now let, let's, let's flip it real quick before we leave today. What are we to use our words for? To speak those things that be not as though they were. What are we to use our words for? To speak the word of God so that the angels of God will then hearken unto the word of God and assist us, as the Bible calls it, minister to us as we're speaking the word of God. So we're speaking those things that be not as though they were. We're speaking the word of God. We're continuing to edify people. If we have something to say, I want, I want to build you up. What do we use our words for? Let's keep going. We, we use our words to speak positively in the, in the life of other people. Yes, ma'am. Use our words for edification, exhortation, and comfort to the hearers. Period. <laughs> Period. I mean, so, 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 so this goes back to now. Now I'm on a different teaching. Now I'm talking about what we talked about last night. Real quick. I just want to hit this. This is what we call the transferring of spirits, the tr spirit transference. If you get on the phone and you get on the phone that, you know what, I now, okay, hey, we just talked about this during our noontime nugget. The family got together. We had a nice little huddle. We heard, we talked about what we're going to use our words for. And then tonight, tonight you're on the phone, girl, did you know so-and-so or, uh, or man, did you know so-and-so? And then right there is an opportunity for the transference of the spirit because either we can agree with what they're talking about. Yeah, you know what? Tell me about it. I want to hear more about it. Or we can disagree and say, hey, now why are we talking about that person? See, that, ta that takes boldness. That takes courage. That takes, that takes godly courage. See, I tell you what, people will either stop calling you <laughs> or they will call you with the right mindset because you took authority over your ears. You took authority over your atmosphere rather than letting someone else bombard your atmosphere with their mess and, and then try to mess you up and get you out of alignment for of what God wants to do in your life. Do you see how the enemy works? Do you see how he works? And I'm not saying these are bad people. I'm talking about these are maybe loved ones. These may be good friends. I'm not talking about they're bad people. I'm talking about when does the time come when we stand up for what is right and we um, establish a standard that this is what I live for? I have a I have a mission in life. I have a passion in life. I, I, I want to stay in alignment with God and everybody who's with me. I want them to know what I stand for so that when they're in my presence, at least then what are they going to do? They are going to align with what I stand for rather than me aligning with what they stand for. I don't want their results. I want my results. I want God's results. And then when they see your standard, when they see your standard and they see how God is moving in your life because you are living by the standard God has established for you, then what is that going to do? You already know the answer. They are going to say, from a distance, they may be too proud to ask you, but they see it. Or some will say, I need, to, I need to get myself together. I need to get myself together. It was all because we set a standard. We said, you know what? We are going to let me get back to my, my verse so we can finish up. I'm not going to let any part of my body become an instrument of evil to serve sin, period. I'm, I'm not. I'm just, that. that is my, that's. 
That is my declaration. Father, that's my commitment to you. Um, help me. <laughs> help me. I, I, I'm not saying that this is the easiest thing, but help me, Lord. And when I slip and fall, help me to recognize it so that I can repent of that and keep moving forward, right? So let's utilize our, our words, uh, our tongues, our mouths. Let's utilize it to the glory of God. Let's utilize it in order to uh, see the manifested glory and blessing of God in your life. Hey, listen, I want to, I want to say this right. Um, listen to this. Your prosperity is in your words. Your healing is in your words. Your future is in your words. Your destiny is in your words. Your marriage is in your words. Your children's futures are in your words. All right? Your husband, if you're not married, he's in your words. Your wife, if you're not married, he's in your words. Let's utilize this power, the, the powerful words that God has given us in order to bring about his change in our life. Remember we said this starting this year out. You have the power. God has given you so much power. I'm telling you, you got to believe me on this. He's giving you so, it's so much power that it's unbelievable that he would give you that much power, but he did it because he, and he's entrusting us to change the lives of people and to change our own lives. Amen. All right. So that's it for today. Uh, we will pick up on, um, on Tuesday, on Tuesday. And, um, what we got going on this way? Oh, uh, we will go continue on uh, 11 a.m. service on Sunday. Join us, 11 a.m. service, where we are talking about superpower, and we're teaching on uh, the power of the name of Jesus, the power of the name of Jesus. So join us on Sunday morning. If you can show up in person, great. Come on out. Wear your Bengals t-shirt if you got one. Uh, if not, then um, uh, join us on Facebook. We will be here at 11 a.m. Love you all. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.